uh, today we're here to talk about uh, evidence-based practices when planning CDAT activities. And we're really privileged to have Emma Devine with us. Emma's from the Matilda Centre at the University of Sydney. And uh, I'd like to invite you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Dennis, and thanks for having us here today. I work as a postdoctoral research fellow at the Matilda Centre for Research in Mental Health and Substance Use. Um, and I've been working there for about six months now. And more specifically, I work in the primary prevention stream. So here, the main aim is to evaluate, to develop, and as well to translate um, evidence-based practice um, in the prevention space. I'm also the project manager for Positive Choices, which is an online portal that houses evidence-based resources um, to do with the prevention in drug and alcohol. So we have resources for schools, we have resources for teachers and students um, in the prevention of alcohol and other drug use. Okay, wonderful. So what you do sits right at the very core of what CDATs are all about, which is primary prevention and harm reduction. So that, that's really wonderful. So again, we're here to talk about evidence-based uh, practice. Can you help us by just unpacking what we mean by that term? Yeah, absolutely. So to say a resource or an activity or a program or whatever it may be is evidence-based, that means it's supported or informed by good quality research. And the good quality part of that definition is really important. So there's two things to consider. The first is um, the study design. So the gold standard in study design to bring about good quality research are randomized control trials or systematic reviews of the literature. So you wanna sort of keep your eye out for those um, compared to say a a smaller scale study with fewer participants or, uh, or an opinion piece, for example, either. The other thing to take into account when you're looking at the, the evidence that supports the resource or activity you're looking into is who's developed or funded that resource in particular. So a great example of this comes from the tobacco industry where they were funding huge amounts of research, um, but they were um, contorting it, they were you know, looking for the findings that they needed so that a doctor could go out and say that smoking was good for asthma. So this is something, it's a really important thing to look out for. If you have two pieces of research in front of you and one is funded by the alcohol industry, you might want to take a closer look at that as well. So assuming a CDAT uh, does have uh, an activity that they want to plan and they've looked at the available evidence and they've eliminated any that might be uh, funded by vested interests. One would expect it's going to have a positive impact on the outcome of that activity. How does that work exactly? So there's a couple of benefits, advantages to using an evidence-based practice activity program, um, whatever it may be. The first is that it's most likely to have the most positive impact on the population that you're working with in terms of their health outcome, in terms of how much knowledge they gain, whatever it may be. The other really um, important reason to have evidence-based practice is more practical. So it's the best use of your oftentimes limited resources, so your time, your money, um, and really importantly, not using an evidence-based practice might have unintended negative consequences. So you might actually end up doing more harm than good. That, that's a really good point and something very important to bear in mind because for some people, when they're planning and even imagining um, a, an activity, which might be about making sure that uh, we educate a particular group of people about some facts related to substance use, that it might seem to them that it would be really useful to uh, use a particular message uh, to a particular group of people, say young people in particular. And it may well be that there people have tried those sim similar kind of messages previously to the same cohort of people and it's fallen flat. Without knowing that and being aware of that, it could be that that CDAT with the best will in the world simply goes ahead and repeats a mistake that has already been made by another group. Whereas using an evidence-based approach is likely to prevent that sort of thing from happening. Yeah, absolutely. It's never intentional to bring about those negative consequences, but it's just the unknown of not having something tested and backed by evidence. Yes, exactly. No, really good point. Yes, people don't set out to make mistakes, of course. 
So what resources, what support uh, do you think can be made available to CDATs to help them uh, along those lines? Because it's not something that many people working or volunteering their time in CDATs uh, will come across in their daily work. To start off with, there's a couple of things that we know from research encourages a successful activity or a successful prevention intervention and things that are unlikely to bring about the outcomes that you want. So these can be really useful things to keep an eye out for when you're looking through possible activities. The first thing to look out for is that it's interactive. So it's engaging, it's encouraging participation, it's really looking for people to sort of engage their brains in the activity itself. The other thing to look out for is that it works to dispel a misconception, a misconception or a myth to do with alcohol and drug use. So an example of this is that if you ask young people, they'll say that all their friends drink when the reality of it is that a very small number of adolescents have had a full serve of alcohol or have tried an, 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 tried an illegal drug. So work, and this is really important because adolescents are likely to do the things that their friends are doing. So by dispelling this myth, we're bringing about positive prevention outcomes and reducing the uptake of alcohol use. The third thing that's really important to look for in a prevention activity is that it builds on other personal skills as well. So it doesn't just focus on alcohol and drug use. It also builds problem solving skills or help seeking, help seeking skills as well. That's great. That, that's really useful. Some, some wonderful examples there as well. So see that there is support available to CDATs to, to, to do that, of course. And I think it's worth making the, the point that the community development offices that support all, each individual CDAT have access to a, quite a broad range of, uh, of information, uh, which is constantly being built on uh, in terms of evidence-based guidelines that can be very practical and uh, are quite, quite literally based on uh, the practices of, uh, of, of related to CDAT activities. So we do encourage the, uh, the CDATs to consult with their community development officer where, whenever they're planning any kind of activity to make sure it's in line with the guidelines. Wonderful. So, so what things should CDATs make sure they avoid when planning activities? Yeah, so there's research around that as well. And one thing that should be avoided is lecture style. So Alongside that interactive element that is so good in prevention activities, lecture style, um, talks, non-engaging um, type activities aren't really very effective. Another thing that's not effective are scare tactics. So these became very popular in the 1960s, particularly around dr drunk driving advertisements you would have seen them in. They tend to be overly graphic such that people don't really relate to the content and tend to switch off. So scare tactics don't really work at all. Okay. Well, that's really important. No, nobody likes being talked down to, and it certainly is uh, the surest way to make people shut down. Great. Are there any particular parting comments you'd like to make in regard to how CDATs can move forward with evidence-based uh, planning? I suppose just to touch on a couple of really good resources that the CDATs might find useful. The first is positive choices. Um, Anything that's on the Positive Choices online portal has been vetted by our team and meets our evidence-based standards um, at the Matilda Centre. So you can sort of go there with confidence um, in terms of looking at the programmes and education resources we have there. Um, other good resources out there are the Alcohol and Drug Foundation, who also have an online website. And ICAP actually have a toolkit for evaluating evidence-based programmes as well. That might be really useful for the CDATs. Oh, wonderful. That's really good to know. We'll make sure that we put links to all of those uh, websites in the description for this uh, video. Well, Emma, thanks so much for your time. It's been really useful. Thanks, Dennis. Okay.